Before I speak with you about what God has asked me to speak with you guys about, I want to give a plug for one of our company products, for the pair. I'm sporting our heel design, which you can check out and purchase from our online store at newfordapparel.com. We all have a story, but not all of us are called to share our story to the degree that God has called me to share my story. In the past, I've shared bits and pieces of the instructions that God has given me that made me aware that I knew God was going to use my entire testimony. Now, you don't have to agree with me and how transparent I have been over the years when I have shared uh, my testimony. I didn't do it based on the personal opinions of people or the money that I did make off of my book. I did it because of the personal encounters that I've had with God uh, prior to writing my book, that they were so real that I had to be obedient. When I wrote my first book, it brought me a lot of pain as well as healing. We published my book back in uh, June of 2014. We printed a small batch of 100 books. And uh, today we have about 20, maybe 30 uh, copies still left in our warehouse. So I'm proud of the success that I have accomplished in the books that people did purchase uh, from me. I'm also very pleased with the feedback that I did get from individuals who attained a copy of my book. So I'm very proud of the accomplishment that I've made. But the greatest thing that book did for me, like I said, it gave me the healing that I need. And I know that it would also give others uh, who read my testimony, who, who have maybe experienced the similar things that I have experienced that I shared in my book, uh, healing as well. And that's the full, that's the main purpose of my book. Um, outside of being obedient to what God has called me to do. But it is to start, if not finish, a person healing from experiencing things from their past that they may have experienced that was similar to mine. After releasing my book, I uh, shared my testimony across social media through videos, content like this. And uh, on my blog um, at, um, well, at the time I didn't have theadrianmovie.com. I was using um, a blog, an old blog that you still can access it, but I would have to look up the address in order to provide it for you. Uh, so I was sharing my, and if, and if I find it, I will share it here on this, in, in text on this video. But I was sharing my testimony on this old blog. Um, as God led me. I never do, did anything, never spoke about my past or what was in my book, not unless I felt led by God. So between uh, uh, 2014, 2015, I shared a good bit of my testimony, my story um, to the general public through blogs, video blogs, as well as written blogs. And then suddenly God stopped speaking to me about my testimony. So I stopped speaking about it because I only would speak about it, uh, share bits and pieces about my testimony based on how God was leading me, what he was directing me to talk about. So um, after 2022, uh, I didn't really speak about my past for about a year, maybe a little over a year because God wasn't talking to me about it. So I wasn't talking to the general public about my uh, my story. Uh, but then in 2022, the late part of 2022, maybe the early part of 2023, uh, God started speaking to me. The Spirit of God started speaking to me about um, writing a second edition to my book. And so um, I got with our 
uh, content editor, Holly Baker. Um, and I spoke to her about it and she gave me some great advice uh, that helped me to um, start focusing on writing in second edition to my book. Um, after taking her advice, I, uh, today I'm finishing up my last chapter for the second edition of my book. Well, I think it's my second edition because the previous chapter, I thought it was my last chapter, but then Holy Spirit dropped something in my spirit as I had finished up the previous chapter. And um, so I knew I needed to add one more chapter based on how God, how God's spirit was leading me um, based on the content that he was dropping in my spirit. So I'm currently writing about that. Now that I've given you um, where I am in my writing process as I'm finishing up this second edition of the book, um, and once I'm done and our content editor, Holly Baker, once she does what she needs to do with it by editing our book, um, then we'll be publishing, publishing and releasing it sometime after that. Um, what I want to do for the remaining part of this video is what God had put in my spirit today. I had this open vision and I saw briefly a few of uh, snippets of my old videos where I was talking about my testimony, sharing my story, this piece of my story, which I haven't shared in a while. And so um, I'm gonna grab a few clips from old videos that I've done um, in the past, um, talking about uh, my story, my testimony, uh, leading up to the most recent one. I don't know the date of the bread off the top of my head, the last one that I have done that God had prompted me to talk about. And um, this is just going to be the beginning, the opening. Well, I do remember the last one I did was March 4th. I think I mentioned that at the very beginning um, that God has started dealing with me about this second edition book on March 4th. And basically, I'll open up this way. Um, I might end the, the snippets of the video with that. Let's see how God leads me in, in putting that together. was once asked, what was the favorite part of my book? I don't know if I have a favorite part because it's such an emotional book. But there are points from my book that do stand out for me personally. Before I share that, let me say this. I didn't write my first book because I had a great book idea, a story I wanted to tell or it was my dream to write a book one day. I did not even write my book as an opportunity to make money. In fact, writing a book never crossed my mind. I was content with occasionally journaling my thoughts, which I have done so for years. 
So when God approached me about writing this book, I was completely caught off guard and initially confused about the entire suggestion. I did not see myself as a writer, let alone an author with many books inside of me as God constantly reminds me of. It really throws me off each time I hear him say that, but I am slowly coming to terms with the ideal of it all. At any rate, getting back uh, to the question that was asked. The part of my book that stands out for me the most is when I describe how God proved me to be a liar while building my confidence, my faith in him and his direction and progress at the same time. Let, let me explain to make that make more sense. In part one, the awakening in chapter four, the cover up in my book, I shared this back and forth dialogue I had with God. Initially, I just could not understand why God would choose me. What was so special about me and, and my story? And I made it very clear to God, I had no interest in reliving my personal story or my past through a book. I really thought writing a story would be a waste of time. I really did not think it was going to make any difference at all. Those were my words to him. This is what I said, and I'm paraphrasing what I said to him at the time. Why? It wasn't going to change anything. How wrong I was. Good morning, everyone. I am out here at my church um, this morning. I was laying in my bed this morning, um, having my time together with uh, God before I got my day started and having some random thoughts and um, God put something specifically on my heart that he wanted me to come out here this morning to pray concerning so this is not a usual day that I'm out here but I'm here nevertheless rain and all I'm, I'm here uh, to do as God is asking me to do um, but before I start my prayer walk I want to briefly address something with you guys um, that I also God, God was dealing with me really in the early morning hours. Um, I have a weird sleep habit as some of you guys are aware of and I have a tendency of sleeping maybe no more than four to five hours at a time and um, sorry my background music went off. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about my background music but at any rate I have a tendency to uh, sleep uh, four to five hours at a time, and so I will use that time um, to do different things um, in the early morning hours. And this morning, one of the things that God was dealing with me was something, <laughs> something that is trying to uh, rear back, an old spirit, I should say, trying to rear back up in me, and God wanted to put that in check. And the reason why he wanted to quickly put that in check because he doesn't want it to hinder the forward progress, the path, the direction he has me on right now because things are accelerating for us. And we don't need any stumbling blocks, especially on my part, um, to hold up the process that God is going, th um, that's taken us through. And I want to share it because y'all know I try to be very transparent on here. Not because I like sharing my business. <laughs> That's far from it. God um, really had to deal with me because I came up in a generation where you keep whatever going on, whatever mess going on in your household to yourself, even though you need help to get yourself out of that situation. That's the generation that I came up um, on. And a lot of times that was unhealthy. And... um and anyway, so one of the things that God had to deal with me concerning when I rededicate my life to him is um, getting from under that spirit and having the balance. Now, I don't share stuff just to be sharing it. Um, when I talk about particularly my past testimony, I share it because God is prompting me to share it in some format. Um, and we have to be mindful that... Um, one of the scriptures that God took me to when he was trying to help me to see by sharing certain things, this was healing for me 
and healing for many others that come across my story when I was sharing certain content. But he also was, he took me to Revelation 12, 11, which speaks about, we overcome our, uh, our past, the things that Satan tries to hold on us as a stronghold by the blood of the lamb and our testimonies, our testimonies. And because we try to hide our testimonies, that is something that Satan used as a card to play against us, to keep us um, stagnant in our walk with Christ, embarrassed, shame, um, whatever the case may be, it may effects it may be having on you. And so I've learned to to become more transparent as the God leads me, as God leads me in that regards. But <clears throat> So this morning he was dealing with me and I want to share this with you before I go on my prayer walk here at this church. Um, he was dealing with that spirit of resentment that was trying to uh, raise up in me once again. And I, I will talk about it a little bit more in details in, in, in my blog, my website blog later on this morning because during that time frame something ball up in me and I end up writing about it a little bit. And so I'll share that right written content later about the spirit of resentment. And he took me to two scriptures, which I have written down here over here on this paper that I'm going to read with you, you guys or to you guys. And then we'll talk about it a little later. I mean, a little bit. And then I got to head on out while the rain is um, settled down a little bit. But what one of the scriptures he took me to and the reason why he took me to these scriptures was because he, one, he didn't want that spirit to raise up um, in me again because of certain circumstances that happened recently that could trigger me if I allow it to trigger me. Um, and then two, I, I really needed to reach out to um, one of the individuals that I'm submitted to um, for counsel to be transparent, open, and to ask for prayer. But um, one of the scriptures that uh, the Lord took me to this morning was Math, uh, Mark chapter 11, 25, and it reads this way. And I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation of the Bible. I try to read out of that version when I really don't want y'all to miss the point um, that I'm making. Excuse me. It reads, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too. And the second scripture is Ephesians 4, 31. And that one reads, get rid of all bitterness, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now, I like to ask you all this question sometimes when I'm reading scriptures or sharing scriptures with you all. Why am I sharing that, those two scriptures with you guys this, this morning? Other than the fact this is how God was dealing with me this morning, something he's trying to prevent from raising up in me due to something that recently had occurred. And um, the reason I'm sharing it with you guys is particularly God had put on my heart this morning. Well, not this morning, but. A while back when I first started coming to this church at some point in the mix of all the things that they were going through and then the transformation that their church was going through God put on my heart to start a prayer group I'm pretty sure they've had a prayer group here once before but since I've been in this church I'm not familiar with any prayer group that they're currently doing and he wants a prayer group to be started um and so he put that on my heart to do. And when I first started coming to this church, as I mentioned to y'all in my last post, uh, he already had me coming out here praying by myself. And there were times certain family members of mine would come out here and part of family members and people who were part of my ministry would come out here and pray with me to pray about certain things that was going on with this particular lo local church. Um, but he brought this scripture up because... How can I come into this community and before this church requesting 
to start a prayer group, if I allow a spirit, a spirit that is not of God to either reside in me or ball up in me, that's that's what if Mark eleven twenty five and Ephesians four thirty one is talking about. Because if we allow Satan or even our own flesh um, to allow certain spirits to come into ourselves, it can hinder our prayers. It you know it can. It will hinder our prayers. Mark eleven twenty five says, "But when you are praying first, we can't go before God and put our prayers before Him until we first, It says we must do first. Forgive anyone, anyone, anyone we are holding a grudge against. I can't come here before the church to pray over nobody, pray on behalf of this church, pray on behalf of this community or anything or anyone if I haven't dealt with me first. My shortcomings. I got to be right before coming for anyone to pray. Not just because God, because that scripture goes on to also and says that so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Not just because of that, even though that's the most important thing. But also, I don't want my prayers hindered. Many of us miss out on opportunities of being blessed by God. Our family being affected um, in a negative way because we refuse to deal with certain character flaws in us. And yet, a lot of us profess to be Christians and praying, oh Lord this, no Lord that, and we ain't dealing with our personality flaws. We ain't dealing with grudges we have against people, resentment, unforgiveness. We're slandering people for whatever reason. And some of us, when we go onto our social media platform and slandering other people and say, God told me to share this with y'all about X, Y, Z and this person, that person, that ministry, that. Don't get me started. And I don't want to be that person. I know what it's like to live a life where you hold grudges, resentment um, against a person. A person that you're very close to. And how damaging that can be to your spirit, your soul, and those you're con those are con closely connected to. It's almost like walking around with a curse. It probably is walking around with a curse. I don't know. That's just me. That part is just me talking. I've never seen that really clear in the scriptures. But to me, it makes sense how the two connects. And so I just... is is is. Negative, that might sound to some of y'all, but this is full for thought that we really need to think about. And if there's some issue in our lives that is causing us to hold a grudge against our mom, our dad, our brother, our sister, some friend, some associate at work or whoever, we need to deal with it. Not necessarily, even though in some cases we do need, need to address some things with... um the people that's causing us hurt because Matthew's 18. I don't remember those verses is right there with fifth star things starting with 15 through 17. It does gives us the principle that too many of us in the church overlook. We always skip down to that last principle where we cut people off. But the principle is if we have something against our brother, we go take it for our brother. If that don't work out. Then we bring in another brother or sister to help us to try to resolve the problem with the person. If that don't work it out, then we put it before the church. And then if that don't work out, then we treat them like a tax cut and just cut them off. <laughs> you know, so that God has a process in the way we deal with hurt. You know, someone who's offended us and they are in the wrong. He has a process in a way that we need to deal with that. And we typically want to jump down to that last one and, and forget the other ones that we have to, to go through. But um, And then when we don't properly handle matters in the process that God gives us so that he or she that offended us can repent and make things wrong or right, 
and then they can be healed and forgiven by God and we can be healed and forgiven by God. And hopefully we can uh, fix whatever is broken between one another. Then God can forgive us and continue to bless for his blessing upon us and help us to heal and move on. And um, God will always prompt us before we fall too deep in the pit. And the more clearly you can hear from God, the quicker he will speak. And because of the type of relationship I have with God, he quickly, because <laughs> this situation just with the, that was trying to raise up that old spirit of resentment in me came up recently and it caught me off guard. It really caught me off guard. And, um, and I thought I was dealing with it properly, but unconsciously I probably was bawling on the inside and God knows what he's trying to do with me through and in this community. And I don't need nothing to slow it down. I know. We have come too far and too close to what God has called my particular ministry to. And not that this, what he's called me to, to do here in church and starting this prayer group really is a stepping stone to that. I mean, it, it probably would help me to grow in the area of other things that God has called me to do. But um, you have to be a blessing to others to really get the full fruit of the blessing that God um, want to bless you with. You know, God called all of us to be servants. And it was like something I said to um my ministry partner, the uh, other, um, this might have been almost a month ago. How can I expect God to bless me with the things he's calling, showing us that he wants to bless us with? If I'm not a willing to help someone build or rebuild something that God has given them to do, you know, to me, it seems like it goes hand in hand. But that's a side note. So I hope what I shared with you guys this morning about dealing with stuff that's in us properly dealing with stuff that's in us has been some encouragement and or insight and inspiration to you guys this morning and that y'all will properly <clears throat> take a look on the inside of yourself and deal with that so that your prayers your family prayers won't be hindered all right as always guys <coughs> you know I'm start back raining but i gotta do what i gotta do I'm going to have to throw a hat on my head and my hoodie. And um, I'm out here as long as God wants me. Rather rain, sneeze, or snow. But anyway, um, y'all, I love you guys. Stay in God's will. Be blessed. And I will be talking with y'all soon. Okay, this is my confession. Lord, I'm looking like my daddy in this video. But at any rate... Um, the video that Shay sent, uh, me, I, I don't know if she included Felicia in the, uh, link by that, I think he was a rapper before his conversion, John Guba, Gubale, whatever his name is. I'm not familiar with the dude, but at any rate, um, I remember a few days for several days in a row, I saw the, uh, video thumbnail entitled, um, in my news feed <clears throat> when Mark and Rogers posted on his Facebook and YouTube page. But I ignored it. Um, I just didn't think it would appeal to me or relate to me. And so when Shay sent me the link, I had no choice <laughs> but to watch it because I try to watch things that people I'm close to send me. And so, um, but I ignored it and I said, I'll just listen to it later. And an hour later, I finally stopped and I listened to it. And I was just shocked. I was floored because this boy's story is, uh, there's a lot of similarity. There's some differences what he experienced in his upbringing, but it was a lot of similarity between him, his mother and my mother in my upbringing. And, um, but the thing that caught me the most about what he said is when he started talking about the reason why he shared his testimony, that is not to knock his mother but um, and he apologized if because uh, he know that's the way she perceives it because she doesn't like it when he shares his testimony. But it's it's for the people who have had a similar 
story to his to help them. And the reason why I'm recording this video and sharing it with you guys is because I can... It has motivated me. Actually, that young man motivated me because I have taken a step back from really talking about my testimony because a lot of times my testimony surrounds uh, the side of my mom that I don't enjoy speaking about, the side of my mother that caused me a lot of hurt and harm and uh, really destroy her family. My mother destroyed her family with her own hands and still can't see it today why her family is so divided, why there's no unity, no real genuine love between her, her, her biological children, the children she gave birth to, and it has stemmed and twinkled down to her uh, children's children. And I knew what God was saying. I'm like, Lord, come on now, man. But I get it. I, I get what God is trying to do in this family. And the reason I mentioned those faces was because God was, his spirit was saying to me, you know, this is not just to be shared with your, um, with your um, children, but this is to be shared with your family, certain family members in hopes that it would, they won't look at it from a negative standpoint, but it would encourage them, edify them in some way. So I, I, I have to do what the Lord has put in my spirit and they can watch it or not watch it. They can receive it or not receive it. <sighs> Jesus, help me. Anyway, but what that man inspired me and helped me to realize I've taken too far of a step back in sharing my testimony. And, and it's... It, it was a lot because um, when I share my testimony, my testimony a lot of times uh, involved my mom because my mom was the main figure in my life and my mother was the main cause of my pain, my destruction, my destructive ways for a period of time in my young adulthood. Um <clears throat> She had a lot to do with developing me um, to be the person I I became for a season. Uh, she was the person that caused me to be mute where there was a season I didn't talk. I didn't interact with my family members. I was there, but I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Um, she was the same reason why I didn't have any social skills like the young man brought out in my early childhood. Um, because I can remember during my childhood, we, I wasn't allowed to express myself. And when I was allowed to my express myself, if I said the wrong word, you get knocked in the head or, or, or cussed out or called names and things of that nature. Um, so I can relate to this young man's story, but what he's triggered in me, this or rekindle, I should say, in me, this, this fire that I have allowed to lay dormant for a while. Maybe I needed a break from talking about my testimony too as well. And as I'm finishing up this, this second book I'm writing, um, maybe now God is slowing me to see this guy's video because he's trying to get me in a place to open my mouth again to speak for the sake of healing the loss and the broken. That's always my goal when I share my testimony, to help heal those who have walked in my shoes and can relate to my story, no matter which part of my testimony I'm sharing. And I, and I agree with that guy wholeheartedly. I never share my testimony to try to bash my mother my father or any of my siblings or anyone who was involved in some way or another in my story. I share it because there are other ears I'm trying to capture that needs to hear my story. And if my family members that can't get it, that's on them. That's on them. Because in Revelations 
uh, 12, 11. I hope I got that verse right. I used to quote that scripture all the time, but I haven't quoted it lately. It says that, um, I'm about to mess up the words, so I'm going to paraphrase it, that we, all of us, we can gain victory and be saved by the blood of Jesus and our testimony. Our testimony. My sibling and I, were, we were raised up in the same household by the same mother. And there are some similarities of the impact of my mother's behavior affect all of us. All of us. But even in our similarity, our story, there was a different way that my mother dealt with me compared to where she dealt with my brother and sister. There was a different way my mother dealt with my sister compared to the way she dealt with me and my brother. You know, and uh, so I'm going to wrap it up. I just simply say that boy, this young man, he he expired me. He's rekindled a need that I need to rekindle, um, especially as I finish up the second book that God has put in my spirit. Um, and I hope that my family can come to a point where they understand why I do what I do when I do do it. And I know my sister does because we've had a conversation in the past about it. And um, she did come in agreement with me about the way I told my story and things of that nature. Um, but everybody else, you know, they kind of stayed away from it. And that's their choice. That's their personal choice. So I'm in it right there. Just be mindful, guys. However, God leads me moving forward. And when I share my personal testimony about my past in order to reach and help others, this is not about bashing mom or, or putting down dad or trying to make them look negative or bad. That's never my goal. That's never my goal. This is about rescuing souls. And if you really believe in God, you really believe in his word. You understand the type of God that we all should be serving is. Then you get it. You won't have conflict about the things I do and say concerning trying to rescue souls. But if you're conflicted by how God moves in and through me in sharing my past, then there's a disconnect between you and the God that you claim you serve. That's it. Deuces. I'm out. Love you guys. And I'm sorry if I offended anyone by this video. It was not my intention to share it with everyone, but God dropped it in my spirit to do so. And I got to always do what God tells me.